thank you very much for for doing this we look forward to having you and freedom song at the festival would you mind telling us a little bit about yourselves um uh, i'm christina uh I am a singer. I teach singing. Um, I've worked with Vox Holloway for a few years now, I think. Um, I'm American, as you can hear, probably. Um, I've been here for about 12 years, coming up on 12 years. And um, yeah, it's great. I mean, Freedom Song is is particularly meaningful for me uh, just because it it deals with so many of the songs that really that I grew up with, but also, you know, my history, which is fantastic. It's really special to be able to do that in another country. Lovely. So I'm Harvey, Harvey Broth, and I'm a composer um, and arranger and musician. And I direct Vox, Vox Holloway, who's the, the group that are coming to do this. And we, we've been doing Freedom Song now for for many years, actually, um, and this is a real thrill for us to be able to, to take it out of London and to, to do it to to a completely new audience, and particularly the history festival. It kind of somehow gives it kind of some legitimacy. I mean, like, you know, okay, now we're now we're really getting somewhere. Uh, no, it, it's brilliant. It sounds fascinating. Would you mind giving us a kind of brief introduction to Freedom Song and and what the people can kind of expect? Shall I, I, I go first, but do chip in because okay. I'm probably I'm a bit vague. I probably forget things, but I mean, it's it's a piece telling the incredible story of the Fisk Jubilee singers. You you knew about them from yes, the, but very vaguely, but yes. It's it's a funny. It's a story that's not very well known. It's certainly in this country, but even in the states, it's amazing how people don't know about it. That, that basically, the Fisk singers were they were slaves. They were ex-slaves, and they came off the fields. You know, having been uh, freed, kind of like it must have been the most bewildering time and thinking, well, what, what the hell do we do now? And they were still uh, subject to persecution and prejudice and all, you know, all that stuff was still going on, but they had been freed. And what they wanted to do was to, to form a university. So they made the Fisk University. Um, and the singers themselves, that they were formed because they were trying to raise funds to build, literally to build. The, there was an old army barracks and it was in a terrible state and they just tried to build a new new thing. So they thought, how, how on earth do we try and raise some money? And, and they, some, of the, some of the students there were, were singers. So, and it's very, it's kind of a complicated story, but try and do it in brief. They were there with, a, with and one of the, the um, senior um, to tutors or lecturers or whatever there was a man called George White who was who was white and he had fought he'd fought for the for the, the cause of freedom so he was obviously a very good man and very sympathetic but nonetheless he was a white man and he he started doing a choir and he used he had sort of some musical gifts and he trained his singers very carefully and they, they formed a choir and they, they thought well we could maybe make some money by doing concerts to build the university so that's what they did and they set off into the south of america and still suffering very harsh conditions and being discriminated against and being turned away from hotels all that that stuff that was still going on and, and did go on for very many years after that but they were the, probably the first black people to be sort of fight directly fighting that cause um no that's not no that's not right but but they they took they took it on that was part of their mission i think um although they did it in a very gentle way they just kind of they were very very dignified about it they, they weren't campaigning like we would think now but they just wouldn't accept certain things and so they toured through the south and then they started going to the north of america and they 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 became quite successful and they started raising thousands of dollars and the interesting thing and the reason why we came across the stories was because they then having had, you know got some success in america but they came to england mark twain the, the writer suggested that they came to england and they they came over and they did about 200 concerts here over a period of years and they were really well treated here respectfully and in the end they, they met gladstone the, the prime minister and they also sang to queen victoria just astonishing like 12 years after they were literally slaves they were they were meeting the, the queen of england and and so that gave us a kind of reason. I mean, Christine knows about it from the American perspective, but um, it gave me a kind of, I mean, there were two reasons why I wanted to try and write this piece. Well, one was because this, the music is so beautiful 
those, they're, they're beautiful songs, they're folk songs, but they come out of such oppression and hardship that you, it's very hard to, to think, oh, we're, we're a nice kind of choir in, in London and we want to do some spiritual, let's do some spiritual, but it, you had, if you do that, there's no context to it. There's no you know, really valid reason to sing the songs. But when I heard this story, I thought, well, that, that, that means that we can at least, we can salute the people who, because they were literally the first people who sang them in public. They were all songs that had been sung on the plantations or in, you know, totally in private or hidden away even, you know, there were songs to lift their spirits. And just to do them just in a nice concert with Dickie Bows on and kind of say, we are now going to sing a spirit it felt really weird. But by telling the story, then it means that, you know, we can sing these songs and, and, and it, it, you know, just, it becomes a valid thing, I think. And certainly the audiences have really felt that, haven't they? It's yeah, just, yeah. It's an amazing. Amazing reception, actually. People are really moved and energized. And um, yeah, I think the story too, even though it's so far away, we really can all still relate to that, everyone. And yeah, it's a really exciting piece from, from start to finish. It's exciting and actually very moving, some of the... There's a lot of dialogue, actually, that is from the transcripts, right? Like, it's actual yeah. things, you know, that, that they were said. And um, it's it's heart-wrenching at, at times and funny at other times. So yeah. there's a bit of everything and great music. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it there sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. And something that you touched on there was the fact that you are mixing the diaries and the records with the song books and, and the songs and, and the music to create this musical narrative. What was that creative process like? Well, the, the, the libretto, the, the, the words for the piece were written by a friend of ours who started Vox Holloway uh, called Justin Butcher. And yeah, we did a lot of research. In fact, I, I asked a sort of gospel expert about, he's just, he's, I said, what, what's, um, what can you tell me about the Fist Jubilee Singers? And he, he just handed me this book. It was a big, no, not that big, but a red book, sort of and clearly very old. And it said, The Story of the Fist Jubilee Singers. And I thought, wow, started reading it. And so there it was, the, all, you know, the whole story, really. And then at the back, I, I was really amazed because there, there was suddenly, there were about 200 songs at the back of this book. Some of them well-known, like Steal, Steal Away or Deep River, um, you know, um, lots lots of well-known ones, but also some very obscure songs. So that was just like an incredible, like one moment to sort of change, change my whole life in a way, because it just, I thought, you know, this is something we have to, to try and do. So then Justin went went away and, and did more research. He, he found some, um, there were a lot of transcriptions, as Christine was saying, transcriptions of, of slaves accounts of, of their, their time. And so some of it's really awful to read. But um, but nonetheless, we have to we have to look in, into that you know to understand where they were coming from. You can't shy away from from the horror that you know that, that was perpetrated on, on these people by by us you know by people like us. And so you have to reflect that in the story. And so he put together this this um, this thing, and it, and it it comes out of oppression and misery. But then. As they start getting successful, it's great. There's still kind of there's still a lot of um, conflict and and persecution. But, but really, when they came to England, they were treated slightly as a novelty act, um, you know, because it was very. It must have been very very shocking. Is the wrong word, but just sort of astounding, really, for for England audiences here to hear a different style of singing and 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 black people just being singing in public, and you know, it was a new new thing. And but they were very well received, and they they sang in soup kitchens, they sang in in palaces, they 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 really sort of became in in the fiber of, of British life at that time. They they spent three weeks in Scarborough on holiday. It's like kind of that's just all. But they went all over the place. They went to to the, to the Isle of Wight, I think, and they went to Northern Ireland, certainly, and Scotland, and everywhere. And it's just a, an amazing story. Yeah, no, it is. It's incredible. And, and it's such a, a culturally relevant and, and powerful story to be telling. Um, how important do you think it is that these stories continue to get brought to light and spoken about? Well, I think it's uh, extremely important. Um, I think the thing that's so shocking is just how, you know, you're already amazed at hearing this story. And it's so amazing, yet 
so unknown. And I think these things are still happening today, these amazing achievements that um, just happen and only those who are there knew about them. I guess it'll always be like that a little bit, but I think it's important. I think it really allows people, I mean, the reality is um, most of our audiences, pro I mean, there've been mixed audiences, but primarily white British people have been in the audiences. And I think, you know, for me, it's really important that um, because the story is so open, and as Harvey was saying, you really get some of the, you, you just relate with them through their horrors. And I think often with issues like this, um, people kind of group it into a category of like, that's too bad for them, <laughs> you know? Oh, and then, then, you know, and then when you really, it's a, it, you know, and it's not in an aggressive way, but it, it's in a really, uh, it just creates an empathy from the audience and they really can, um, get an understanding of what that's like. So I think it's very important, particularly now, um, when so many groups are looking for that from society, really. That's, sure, that's absolutely right. And I think also something that is good about it is, I mean, I, I questioned myself long and hard when I was writing it and think, even thinking about writing it. And, and actually since, you know, why should a, a white person from Coventry, England, be, be telling this story? But I think stories are for everybody. And what what this one actually rely I totally relies on is is a collaboration between black and white artists and and singers and you know it because I I certainly can't you know I couldn't just stand up and do the story on my own and the inspiration that I get from working with Christina and the soloists for this piece the amazing soloists Wills Morgan and Michael Henry and Angela Caesar they're all coming to to perform with us we you know we work together we trust each other we we made this. The, this piece happened. We've we've done a subsequent one uh, called the Sunder Shine, which um, you know just wouldn't exist without us having did this close relationship and, and a desire to tell these stories together. And I think I think well, I hope that makes it a valid thing. I think you know that that reliance on each other is is powerful. And I think we have to if we're going to have a discussion about racial issues, then everybody has to be in the room, and everyone has to 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 say something. You know, maybe it's time for white people to stand back a bit. But you can't just vanish. You have to be part of that conversation. And well, um, I think on that point, though, I'm listening, and I'm like, actually, in my head, I was thinking, actually, this story actually does need to be told. Uh, by a white person in a way because uh you know um people listen much more <laughs> and unfortunately i know but, <laughs> but that is the truth you know the, you know at least from my perspective that uh i thought about oh actually if a <laughs> sorry i'm just here like it is bam yeah, but like you know if, if a if a, say a, a black composer wrote that uh, the story would stay within the black community. You, it, I mean, okay, maybe you could have some uh, some kind of mixed race kind of interaction, but yeah, it does require. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it's an asset that that yeah. you've written this. Yeah, when we had we had we've been doing this box Holloway now for t ten or t for twelve years probably now, and we we have built up an audience who are who are really interested in sort of seeing what we do. We're not like most choirs where we've seen the 4A Requiem or the Mozart Requiem, what, you know, the standard repertoire. People come to see our concerts because they know they're going to be new and maybe interesting and maybe quite different. You know, we do a lot of work with, with jazz musicians. And so it's unusual for a choir, but we have built up this audience that wants to know things. So we can, you know, we can at least start telling the story. And the, the I mean, what we also did for this one, which we, couldn't manage so much for, for the Chalk Valley Festival is, is to collaborate with, with there's a choir in uh, Hackney Empire, community choir there, and we collaborated with them and they are more uh, black mixed than, than us. And that, that was a very powerful thing. And we, we hope that the, the piece will start to build bridges between, between communities and, and it should be sung by, you know, a completely mixed, um, or choir and seen by a completely mixed audience in the end, but you've got to kind of start somewhere and try and get to, towards that. And, and it, you know, I think it's, it has been very successful in, in that way so far, and we really hope that it will spread. No, it is, it is fascinating. And I, for one, can't wait to, to see it. It sounds amazing. Oh. Um, is there one thing in particular that you're most looking forward to at the festival this year? Gosh, I think, I would say singing it to um, a, a very, what I imagine 
different crowd. And I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't know that much about who comes to this festival, um, but I imagine people are more into the history. I think that'll be really cool. Um, everyone's always quite moved by that, but if people are there specifically kind of with that interest, um, I think, yeah, I think that's quite exciting. I think it'll be a different um, response. I think, I think that's right. I mean, well, one thing we found when we perform it is that uh, people get very caught up in the story. I mean, particularly, we, we did it in London, there's a bit in the story where they they sing literally, you know, sort of yards from where we was. We did it in the Hackney Empire twice, and the Fist Jubilee singers didn't sing there because it wasn't quite built when they, they they were touring. But they sang in a church immediately around the corner, which you can walk into today and just stand in their footsteps. And I think people in this country kind of it's, it's like living history, I guess. You kind of suddenly think, God, this is about us. Or you know, we we we're there. We're because we're, mm. they they I'm, they probably performed in Salisbury. I should do some research before we, we go. Mm. But they certainly they performed in. Um, I know they did in Southampton because I did a performance there. You know, just places all around there. Bristol, they certainly you know nearby. So it's it's it is quite fascinating. I, I mean, one thing I'm, I'm interested to see is you know the reenactment of, of history, which I think is a big big thing for Chalk Valley and. Um, and I, and we're not going to be wearing um, clothes or anything, but we, we are. We will be dressed though, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Changing it this right. year, <laughs> nudist singing, <laughs> slave. Yeah, no. Didn't come out <laughs> quite right. But we won't be dressed in costumes. <laughs> but we, you know, we we are trying to 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 be. And, and the great thing about a story is that once people sort of go with it, then you surrender, don't you? And you become part of it, and the story it becomes about all of us in that space it'll be interesting i think it's an outdoor thing um and i hope that people you know can really hear clearly and 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 follow it that's always a bit of a challenge out, outdoors but um but also very nice it's, it is beautiful to perform outdoors and the the, the the sun will be getting on well, you know the sun will be gone but it'll be getting duskier and it, that gives a special mm. kind of atmosphere so yeah that should be fun Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's much appreciated. And we're looking forward to having you at the festival. We can't wait to see Freedom Song. Thank you very much. Amazing. See you there. Thank you. See you there.